set for the Barber of Seville, which is designed by Tracy Grant Lord. Um, and as you can see, it is a symphony of doors and windows. It pays homage to that classic staple of comedy, the door. The history of comedy is unimaginable without the doors that separated Shakespeare's sweethearts from each other just as surely as they keep Rossini's lovers apart. Well, Lindy's conception uh, goes back to a, a balance of sitcom and, and uh, farces like Fido, where or microphones noises off, where people enter and exit at rapid pace, windows open and close at rapid pace, and that propels the comedy forward. Especially here in America, a lot of people think of it very much as, a, as almost like the set of laugh-in, so people kind of pop out and, and say something funny and pop back in again. So that's going to have a lot of resonances for people. There are nine doors and there are 12 windows which are used on a consistent basis all the way throughout the production. I think doors uh, in comedy are, are used for classic for classic purposes and, you know, really interesting entrances if you think of things like um, Get Smart or Seinfeld. Um, they have that, that function of a kind of entrance statement um, and we certainly use that with, with the Barbara Seville, with Figaro's entrance, um, but also um, for, for chaos, you know, the idea, if you think about revolving doors and that, that kind of thing, the idea of, of doors opening and shut and people, you know, having doors slammed in their faces, that's a kind of classic comedy sta staple of... The end of the opera, the act two finale, a dance. And since it's written in the meter of Fandango, um, she, she wanted a, a, a full company choreographed Fandango. It really ends up being like sort of a, a, a Mount Everest kind of feat mm. with, with the entire company dancing and singing at the same time. And, and it's incredibly joyous and it ends uh, the opera with a wonderful reverence for the audience. Yeah.